Hello, my name is Dan Johnson and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another prediction video for the new episode of Doctor Who Flux entitled Once Upon Time. This is episode three, we're about halfway through and I've got a couple of interesting things to talk about. Uh, but first, um, I've got some new lights. You probably can't see the difference in how it's lit. Uh, but now I know that these ones won't blow up, so I'm pretty sure we'll be a lot safer from now on. Um, and they're, they're, they're pretty nice. If you're not aware, I have been predicting what's going to happen within the next episode of Flux each week. Uh, last week, for War of the Sun Tyrants, we were actually pretty spot on. Like, we got a few things that I didn't expect to. We got the whole double war thing, you know, uh, present day Earth and Crimea, and uh, lots of little details like that. So, I'm pretty happy with my predictions there. This week, we'll have to see. Um, I feel like with this one, there's a lot less to be known from it. It seems to me like a lot of the promo pictures, uh, etc., have all been from like the beginning of the episode and none of them have really been pointing to something in the same way that the other ones did if that made sense as in you could see that there was some progression to the story with those promo pictures there were two settings for example or three settings with this one you can't really do that there seems to be a lot of back and forth but i've got some theories on that so let's get started first let's talk about something that actually didn't happen within the show but happened in the behind the scenes videos that i thought was a little bit odd the first being that the lady that plays Mary Seacole, who is played by Sarah Powell, um, when she was interviewed, she said that instead of playing Mary Seacole in episode two, War of the Sun Tyrants, or playing Mary Seacole in Doctor Who, she said in series 13 of Doctor Who, like on purpose. I don't know whether that was just like her misspeaking as, you know, like, oh, I was in this series of Doctor Who and not this individual episode because it's all a bit under wraps. Maybe she didn't know quite what episode she was in, perhaps. So maybe that's why she said series 13 because there's many other reasons why you would say it. But that might lean towards the theory that she's going to be making another appearance. There is that moment when she turns to Mary Seacole at the end and says, I hope I see you again. So maybe that will lead somewhere. But at the same time, I mean, she's said that to lots of people. Um, throughout all her previous regenerations, so that might not be anything to work on. But it is very weird that she said series 13 and not just the episode. And Mary Seacole might not be the only one that also returns. I have an idea of for the Sontarans to make a return as well. This is because in episode one, there is a Sontaran played by Dan Stark. He plays something called, someone called uh, Gregor, Gregor. And he's a sort of veteran Santaran. He's kind of disgusting, as they say, and they both like lick their lips and it's kind of awkward. But Dan Starkey plays that Santaran. And then Dan Starkey also plays a whole bunch of other Santarans within War of the Santarans. He plays like two foot soldiers and then the one that they um, execute for being wounded and Mary Seacole is looking after him, that one um, as well. We never see this this veteran Sontaran in person, so I wonder whether he was in a different place and he never actually met the Doctor and is still alive. He would want revenge for the death of his friend and maybe he will go after the Doctor and appear later on in the series, maybe episode 5, as a kind of mega cliffhanger. I like the idea that, that there's... The final episode is like multiple threats. It's a bit like Primeval. There's a series of Primeval, I believe it's series two, when at the end of episode five, they realise that all of the creatures they fought throughout the series have been locked up and have been kept by this guy who's like a double agent. And then in episode six, they fight against this guy and the creatures that he's been keeping captive. So in a way, they fight all of those villains again if that makes sense but we will continue that if it actually starts developing some kind of evidence as we go along and the other thing that was blurted out during a behind the scenes video was the ravages and i'm afraid i'm not referring to the ninth doctor audio i am referring to swarm and azora who i'm afraid are referred to as the ravages 
Sorry, Chris. So a lot of my important points do come from Yaz's section of this week's episode. I think the War of the Santarans is mostly a standalone thing in terms of like the Crimea and all of that was all standalone. And then we come to Yaz's bit and that's all been arc focused, let's say. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Swarm. I absolutely adore him as a villain. I just think he's amazing. He has such majesty. I think he's brilliant, as I mentioned in my review. But I would like to talk about the fact that he and his sister, presumably, can't activate the Atropos people. He asks Vinder to walk onto the step in order to trigger it. There's a proximity um, thing. I quite like the idea that he's a, as a husk and that's why he's kind of got quite skeletal features and with that I think that that could be a weakness of his the fact that he can't quite interact with this world because he's already dead or incredibly old that there is some kind of weakness there whatever it is that stops him from being able to interact with that podium. A thing that's been a bit of an issue for me in terms of understanding where they're going with it is the TARDIS playing up, the destruction of the TARDIS. I thought maybe it would lead to something within the cliffhanger of last week, you know, it would be the reason that they get saved or whatever, um, and that was the point of it. I struggle to connect the dots between other subplots and the plot with the TARDIS until this week when we learn that this planet is the planet of time. And that time, why did I say it like that? And then because of the flux, two of the Mori, I believe they're called, have been killed. And that's why time is in disrepair. It could also be affecting the TARDIS. But I don't know exactly what Chibnall has planned with this TARDIS because I'm not quite sure what he can really do with it. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. And the final thing that I noticed from the episode was that the man from the 1800s... Um, Interestingly, this is actually based on a real event. There was a man in Liverpool that actually did build tunnels. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what Dan makes of this whole thing because he's a big history fan, especially of his local history. So the tunnels of Liverpool are going to be a big thing for him, a big mystery, and he's going to see what they're for. What they're for, I'm not sure, but that man definitely has some connection to time. So I presume, once again, it's some kind of connection to the flux and the seeing of some creature that he's trying to protect the world from using tunnels. With this week's episode, I'm a little bit um, confused. I think that there is a little bit more to see that we obviously aren't being shown with promo pictures. I think that they're holding back a little bit in the same way that Fugitive of the Judoon last year held back with a lot of the stuff that happens later on. Um, most of the promo pictures were from the Jadoon appearing in the episode. So they didn't have like the roof doctor, obviously. So in America, there's these things called like mid seasons and mid seasons are like the first fight with the bad guy. Basically they have an altercation that is supposed to have rippling effects onto the rest of the series. The Flash do it all the time, but they've done it so many times that it doesn't actually have like a rippling effect because that's not how they make their stories anymore. But if it did, that would be how it should work in theory. And maybe Doctor Who is doing something like that. This week is the first kind of really arc heavy, I suppose, episode. There's not a big focus on a returning villain, a villain like the Weeping Angels or the Sontarans. I think this Weeping Angels are in it as well as the Cybermen. But from what we've seen, there's no big draw like the Sontarans this week. I think what we'll do is we'll learn some background on these bad guys and I think we will learn more about the side effects of the flux and the world that we're currently living in. I think that now they've given Dan something to do, they've kind of fleshed him about out a bit more, um, they'll focus more on the villains of the piece I suppose and start giving them backstories and Mostly, I think it will be connections to, to the division and the the Doctor's past, because that seems to be the Chibnall focus at the minute. I think that there's going to be a kind of lot of flashbacks. I think that at some point during the story, as we've seen from a couple of uh, images of the trailer, Yaz and Dan are returning to their 
to their to the to earth to their their starting points i suppose yaz is going to be a police officer and dan's going to go on a date with diana i believe i think that that was like the thumbnail for amazon prime i believe it was or amazon um the image for next week's or two was an image of dan with diana or a woman that looked like diane so maybe we'll learn a little bit about what happened there um but there's definitely a shot of yaz and the police officer uh, police officer uniform again so maybe she'll be going back maybe Yaz will be separate from the others because of this connection to the Mori I think there's going to be a, a heavy focus on time and time manipulation there is also this new theory that I need to talk about because the doctor's got a new costume and a lot of people are saying that it's the evil doctor um you know like enemy of the world i think it is but i can't remember his name i think it begins with a z maybe this is like an evil doctor from a different timeline or something like that maybe like the doctor from the future perhaps um or it could be the representation of the doctor going darker now that she's learned more about her past and she's had to go darker because her past has confronted her and it's more of a representation of an evil doctor than an actual uh, evil doctor which i think might be more of the case to be honest but i think there's also going to be some kind of mission here as well i think that they've got some kind of task to do um which will be either given to them by swarm as a way to free yaz and vinda or because swarm understands the doctor he'll, he understands that she has companions so maybe he would use that against her because that's the best way to get at the doctor i think davros did the same i think they're keeping this week a lot closer to their chest than they have done before i think there's going to be something big happening um but those are my theories um what are yours what do you think is going to happen in the next episode of flux it's on sunday which is very exciting uh, i will probably be back next week talking about village of the weeping angels i believe it's called um and talking about theories for that one and for the continuing adventures in Doctor Who Flux. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. My reviews are also going to be available on the Sunday nights. I am trying to get them up before midnight each night um, on the Sunday. But we will have to see whether I can follow suit each week. Uh, because I do get quite busy, surprisingly, on a Sunday. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. And... Uh, Goodbye.